Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Coco Show. I'm John. I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Doodlebug. Oh, Doodlebug. Yeah. Now, uh, before we get into Doodlebug, we got a little package in the mail. Oh. Okay. And I've spent some time unwrapping this I thing. I can't pretend to be surprised by this. <laughs> okay, this thing Boat came has in, wrangled this package for This thing minutes. came in a massive, massive uh, thing. Uh-huh. Um, it was uh, like four feet long, two feet wide, and like three inches thick. No, so it's, it's, it's very, very, it was wrapped very, very well. This came to us from the Isle of Hawaii. Oh, beautiful. Our buddy Jonas sent this over to us. Our good buddy. And it is a mounted advertisement for, I believe this is a Coco One. Correct? Oh, look how nice. Yeah. So See, we got the joysticks down there and everything. Yeah, so this looks like it might have appeared in a Radio Shack catalog. <laughs> Um, yep, because there's a page number down there. Yeah, and so Jonas has actually uh, taken this, scanned it, blown it up, and mounted it uh, on. Well, this is fully wall mountable. So thank you so much, oh, Jonas. That's super, super that. awesome. Let's get a real good look at that. I didn't realize that the uh, the MSRP on the original 4K Coco was that high, three hundred ninety nine dollars. So it was well, price it like comparable. Like TV or anything. That that's that's pretty old school. But yeah, that's a that's a good chunk of change. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. Um, now, do you remember later on as the Coco 2 and the Coco 3 came out, where, did they all retail around the same amount or did oh, they... Oh, jeez, I don't remember. You dude. don't remember. You know, if you look at this, though, so like computer, $400, right? TV, that 13-inch color TV, $400, mm -hmm. right? Then you got your cassette deck, 60 bucks. Joysticks twenty four ninety five. Yeah. So the TV was as much as the computer. Yeah. Look at the labeling on the TV. It's even got a little. It's even got a little Radio Shack it emblem matches, on the yeah. TV. Now that would be the set you'd want to have. You want to get the matching TV and computer set to complete your collection. That's very, awesome. Very cool. yeah. Thank you, Jonas. That's great. So we'll, we will definitely hang that. Band we'll mount boy that up. right on the wall. It will look just like this by the next episode. Those so silver ones, you know, the, ch the Chud's got one of those. Does he? Yeah, he's got one. Mm. He, I'll, I'm begging him to get that over here. Is that the one that he he maxed out the RAM? Oh, he put he put a stuff. colored LED on it for power oh, and man. reset buttons. Mm -hmm. I think it's got something there to dispense gum. <laughs> you never know what I always put on there. All right. Well, Aaron, before we dive into Doodle Bug, yeah, um, scurry into it. Do you think that? The, where do you stand on insect-based games in general? I like them. Are you a fan of insects? Would you call yourself a um, no nope. insectophile? I'm an insect killer. I don't like them. Mm. No, I don't like I don't like bugs or bug-related games. Now, there are a few exceptions. A Idea would be what comes to mind. Of course, the Coco has a couple different bug related games. You got your uh, Mega Bug. We haven't talked about Mega Bug. We have not talked about Mega Bug. Pretty, pretty, it's a pretty uh, big time player in the in the uh, Coco world. Uh, but no, I don't like bugs. I don't like real world bugs. You know, like right now in the arcade, I got I got a solid sealed arcade. Nothing gets in or out. You know that. Well, guess what gets in there? Ladybugs have gotten in there somehow. Like, mm. how's that possible? And these are not the red ladybugs. These are like the orange and black, like mutant ladybugs that nobody likes, right? They're like I don't like Asian, any of them. They're Asian lady beetles. No, I mean I don't know. Listen, I don't know their I don't know their point of origin. There's little annoying things. You can't stomp them. You can't do nothing. So what are you gonna do? What about you? You're a big bug guy. You know, I don't mind bugs as a trope in video games. I think there's a lot to be said for a good. Um, Ant game, Ant Eater. Have you yeah, played but you that kill arcade? ants and that. I'm, I don't mind that. Okay, well, I mean, I think that that still. Oh, can yeah, be... killing bugs. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Donkey Kong Three. Yeah. Another. You're gonna say that? I don't know why, but it's, <laughs> that's been coming a lot of coming up a lot here recently. But yeah, you kill bugs. That's fine with me in that one too. Uh, you know, it's just like I said, I, I just don't like like I've got a thing with bugs and birds most of. If you stay, got a thing with birds? Yes. Yeah, it's a it's an unwritten sort of law. If you don't, if you stay out of my house. Stay out of my front of my car, whatever. I'm not gonna fool with you. I'm not going out of my way. I'm not running out of the yard with a fly swatter and just gunning down everything. Just stay the heck out of my way. That's all I ask. Listen, we're huge. We own the earth. Are they you owe telling it to me us. that when a bird comes into your house, you break that bird's neck immediately? The bird. I've never had one come in the house. You never had a bird in the house. No, you I have had them come in our office before. You know, you know, a bird in the house. That's what they say. It's worth two in a condo. Mm -hmm. um, what about bats? 
Um, I've, I've encountered bats a few times. Again, same sort of principle. Never had a bat in the house, though. No, not in I've the house. I've had two bats in this basement since we've lived here. Really? It's frightening that to is watch scary. those things run around. Because you have a delicate constitution. Does I that do. stuff bother you? It does bother me. You know what I do? I don't know. I get my baseball glove, and I come down here, and I catch the bat in the baseball glove. Do you, do you give it a good pounding? No, and then I take it back up to the, the, the back porch, and I kind of I fling the glove and the bat into the backyard, and then the next morning, I go get the glove. What? <laughs> I'm not going out there with the bat. Not so you always show them eep your manly side when you do that. Now, <laughs> what is the, uh, what's it like to hold a human thing in a glove? It's, uh, I can tell you one thing. The bat does not like being in the glove. Well, would you? Not you particularly. You him. Yeah. Is it a I, catcher's mitt or just like no, a first no, baseman? It's, 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 it's a fielder's glove, uh-huh. like a shortstop. Yeah. Wear. Not softball. No. So no. there's not a lot of room in the pocket there. There's not a lot of room in the How pocket. How big are these bats? The bats are, well, you know, bats are tiny. Their wingspan is ginormous. When oh, they're yeah. all like this, it's like four feet across. Yeah. But then they're like hamster size when they're. But you can see, like I look down in there, like when I when I when I gather the courage, yeah. and the little bat, his little fangs are like biting into the. Oh the yeah. Mitt and stuff. Oh, they'll bite you. Yeah. My thing is, I'm always worried they're going to get entangled in my hair. Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. Well, I could the, the bat would wreak havoc upon your beard. I can tell you that. They have. Yeah. They have done that. What do you think about Radagast? You think that's that's accurate? I don't know what that is. Radagast is the brown wizard from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Oh, yeah, I know him. Yeah. And in the Hobbit movies, he's sort of, he's got birds living in his beard and things like that. You know like who that. plays him was the guy that played Doctor Who. Really? Yeah. Uh, he was the, uh, Sylvester McCoy mm. is his name. Which he, doctor he was the was doctor, uh, let's see, one, two, three, let's see, Tom Baker was what, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Eighth, eighth doctor, I think seventh or eighth doctor. Okay, he was great. My personal favorite. Really? Yeah, and I know he had a bigger part in the films than uh, than they had in the book with mm-hmm. him, as I recall. Right. I liked him. He was one of the high points in those movies. That I didn't think those were very movies good. Were awful. Yeah. yeah, and really, he was just wacky. But I mm-hmm. like wacky. Yeah. But I can't remember what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Maybe we should just move on to. That's probably a good here. idea. All right. So Doodlebug. Let's talk about some Doodlebug action now, both. Mm-hmm. Doodlebug. Have you played this before? No, I'd never played Doodlebug before it was assigned to us for the show. Yeah, so this one done by uh, David Crandall. Uh, from It published by Computerware in 1982. This will pretty much run on anything with 16K or up. Now, when you look at Doodle, or when you look at Doodlebug, what's the first thing that crosses your mind? This is a ladybug clone. Right, okay, and now here is the correct answer. This is a ladybug clone. <laughs> <laughs> Pure and simple. Uh, if you have played Lady Blood, B- I don't know why I keep wanting to say Blug. I think it's because the fangs. I thought Blood. Mm, you get Blug yeah. and Butt. Anyway, if you've played Ladybug, you've pretty much played Doodlebug. Now, uh, uh, I suck at Ladybug. So I know this is you're right up your alley. Because this is, of course, obviously based on the Universal game Ladybug. Believe it or not, you know, you know what year that came out? I think it came out in 1982. It was 81. 81. Very close. So this game was right on the heels of it, you know. Uh, I know you love, we both love the Universal games. You know, I know you love it. And this game shares a lot of the traits. Telephone folks. Uh, some of the traits that Universal Games have and what this shares with them, what you thought about it. Universal Games are all, for the most part, they're all great. Um, they all have, uh, you're collecting letters in some regard to spell words. Yeah. Um, extras in almost all of them. I believe that there are only a few games where you collect special. There's this game and there's one other one, which is like a weird sort of (laughs) side-scrolling game. Mm -hmm. Um, but those, I would call those the troops of the Universal game. The Universal Cabinets are very um, evocative of their time period. They're this sort of like tannish color, and they, uh, they're they very wide, or they're very deep cabinets. They're much yeah. deeper than a modern, more modern cabinet. They go for big bucks. And the, um, the artwork on Universal Cabinets <laughs> is very almost surreal uh like for example the the artwork on the ladybug arcade machine is not a ladybug it is a weird fairy that is wearing very sheer clothing um and uh and 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 it's not it's not like good looking in a good way it's good looking in, or it's just creepy uh i love ladybug i would never own a ladybug cabinet because that art is it's that so creepy weird. i never paid yeah, attention to it i didn't realize it was that creepy yeah. man 
of course, they're designed by a Japanese fellow, so they they're gonna and Universal they were, they're gonna put some weird stuff yeah. in there. You know, uh, the the fact that you're spelling a special and extra is pretty interesting, and you get bonuses and uh, when you get when you get there or free men, according to according to what uh, I've got here now, I'm, which I'm guessing that works in the same way in the arcade. Now, in terms of getting those multipliers, explain that, Boatster. Okay, so the way that this works <laughs> is you have a countdown timer. Um, and it's, visible. it's it's a visible timer. It's not a numeric counter. Yeah. It's like you've got, imagine Breakout, the Atari game Breakout. And the blocks disappear one by one, row by row. And when they reach the bottom and there's no more blocks left, everything changes color. All the power-ups change color. And part of the strategy of this game is that you can, you want to collect uh, when the letters are a certain color so you can, you can actually score those. So for example, on the board there will be random letters and you can either <laughs> use those to spell extra or special. Extra gives you an extra life, special gives you an extra gain. Okay. Um, oh, it's an extra gain. It's an extra gain. And I, now in this version is it an extra game or extra man? Extra, I never was able to extra spell gives it. you an extra man. Okay. I don't fine. know what special would do. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, if you're trying, if you're playing at home, you you don't care about special. You right. only want to spell extra. So you got to wait until everything is blue. Now in the arcade game, the actual countdown uh, blocks will be that color. You will see that. But in the uh, in in the doodle bug, they're always white. Right. And that's just part of the limitations of the system, I'm sure. But it's cool that that visual countdown is still present, and it's in a slightly different place in in this game. But at any rate, it's there. Um, so anyway, but the real secret of this game is not to try and spell extra at all. The real secret oh. of this game <laughs> okay. is to collect the hearts while you are in sort of the default space because the hearts multi give you score multipliers. And so if you collect the hearts while they're in their normal white uh, you know, kind of configuration, right. you can multiply your score 2x, 3x, up to 5x per level. And that is the secret to getting a high score. Once you do that, then you can go around and try and collect the letters for extra. But other than that, uh, you, you really just want to ignore the letters and concentrate on those hearts because this is a high score game and you are being pursued by um, a bunch of different non-ladybug insects. This game is a, uh, it's very Pac-Man-esque. However, it really stands apart from the other Pac-Man clones that were that came out at the time. This game really tries to do different things. There are gates that you can open and close that swivel on a central pivot, and you can close off different corridors and open up different corridors and actually trap enemies and keep them from getting to you. So if you're being chased and you can close a gate behind you as you go by, you can keep that enemy from killing you, which is great. <laughs> Another thing that's great about this game is that there are skulls littered around the playfield, and of course, when you hit that skull, you die. But the skulls are friendly fire; they are equal opportunity deaths. Yeah, and the enemies will run into those, and you I can sort of corral them. Into yeah, them. and I love the fact anytime that enemies can be hurt by things on the playfield, it brings me joy. So uh, that that's another thing this game has going for it. Um, in the when this game starts, all the enemies live in sort of the same kind of a ghost house as they do in Pac-Man. Um, but uh, the enemies take much longer to emerge from the ghost house. In Pac-Man, they pretty much come out right away. In this game, they don't. But when they all come out, you can actually venture into the former ghost house, and that is where your bonus fruit is or your bonus vegetable. And so that is a, that is a point bonus too. So the genius of Doodlebug is that it is. There are a million ways to play it. There's a million ways to be successful. There's not just one strategy, and it's not dependent upon ghost patterns like Pac-Man. Now, how, how did you find this compares to the actual Ladybug? Oh, it's great. It moves just as fast. The game moves just as fast. As, as the same the, elements, the, pretty the, much? The elements are all still there. The colors are fine. You know, all three colors are there. Uh, you know, are the colors as vibrant? Heck no, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. This is to me, the best arcade port I've played yet on the Coco. Now, Sailor Man looks graphically more impressive <laughs> um, because it's built on, it's cloning a more graphically impressive game. But in terms of, you know, total accuracy to the arcade original, this one is going to be hard to beat. Sailor Man was pretty accurate, but I, I mean, again, I know, I knew when this came up, I was like, this is Boat's game. I'm going to defer to him on this one because I was never really good at this game. I mean, I just, I've never liked it. This game was sort of a big deal. Well, it was a player on your uh, 
ColecoVision, mm -hmm. your Intellivision. I don't know if anyone else got ports of this. Oh, I'm yeah. The, uh, I'm sure the 2600 got leaked. Did they get, you I'm think sure it did? did. Um, the, uh, uh, but this is just a game I could never wrap my head around. It's funny because we were, we were talking about Pingo earlier, which is another game where the maze sort of changes at your command. Mm -hmm. And that one I always had a much better... Uh, I had a much better go of it than I did this one. Uh, this one, they saw Pac-Man and they were like, you know, we we can't be Pac-Man. Let's be something that is in the same genre. And they mm -hmm. did it. And I mean, I'll, to their credit, it's it's a it's a clever game. Now, you know, Lady or Doodlebug, I ended up getting this a uh, um, color modified version of this. Okay. Did you try that one? Uh, unless it was the one that was installed on the SD card. Yeah, no. I, I I went and got it, and it, it looks good. Uh, in fact, I, I'm I'm thinking this is the one we're looking at. It it it, it, it looks real well, good. Well, this looks the same as the does. So you probably I, I'm I assuming think you had the, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the uh, you know one thing about the uh, various Coco games is if you if you nose around, uh, uh, but there are uh, there are people and Curtis is our buddy Curtis is doing a lot of the uh, of the of the speed hack stuff where it's upgraded. So if you've got a processor that can handle it, and they've also done stuff with pallets. Uh, we. Remember when we played Puyan, uh, we were uh, lamenting on the pallet on that mm -hmm. one. They've actually done a, a they've done a pallet fix on that one too, uh, which it desperately needed one. So they're 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 out there uh, if you look around. But uh, this game it doesn't change the gameplay at all. Uh, the smooth, you know, it's a smooth you know, smooth game. You know, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, real solid. Uh, it'll run, like I said, I've never had trouble running it, and I just suck at it. So there you go. Yeah. Now, um, before we go on, yeah. I want to make sure and not forget about this. Okay, go ahead. Have you ever heard of this show called Coco Talk? Yes, I watched it almost. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because I was just talking to Curtis the other day. Uh, I think when I was sick, that's the first time I've missed that show in part for like, it's been months. I mm. usually catch it because it's so long, <laughs> you could catch some chunk of it during your day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely know about the boys over at Coco Talk. Well, the boys over at Coco Talk are starting a new, <coughs> me, um, a new high score competition. Oh, okay? okay, great. And last week was the first week, and they chose Donkey King. Oh, as yes, the first I've, game. I've heard about this. Well, you, you even submitted a score. I did. In you. I did. And uh, let me be the first to announce that this week's high score challenge game is going to be Doodlebug. Oh, outstanding. I'm yeah, dead. I'm a yeah. dead man. And so uh, oh, you're loving that, aren't you? Oh man, I can't wait. I'm gonna practice up and now they've, and try and have they added a little a, score. they've added a game section to their show, right? Has uh, as I recall. Right. That and this is part of that push is, I see. It, is to bring more more gaming in and, and people are going to talk about various strategies and things like that. Oh that's great. Yeah. And so if you are interested in participating, please uh, go on over to the Coco Talk Discord and uh, on their high score channel they've got that's where you can submit your score. And of course always check out the Coco Talk podcast. Those guys are all great. Yeah. So. yeah I love, and, and if, you, if you've if you got uh, six hours to kill and you want to hear some lively con debate, that's the place. That's right. Go. That's right. Brevity is not. <laughs> it is, it is the opposite of this show. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, speaking of Curtis, he sent me over, I get, I get to give him credit, he found some of the most obscure reviews. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to show this. I printed this out because this is out of a, uh, uh, some sort of uh, some sort of uh, fanzine or something. I'm going to cover this guy's address here, but you can see you can see that right there. I can Straight just imagine. Out of a fanzine. Yeah, somebody just taking a pencil or a pen and just drawing some bugs. At it's the called the Dynamic Color News, February '89 edition. Uh, they and they they gave this the high sign. They said this. Uh, they mentioned here that this came on tape at uh, $24.95 or disc at $29.95. Now it's funny the uh, the lady that wrote this article I think it was a, it may have been a man actually Lloyd so I guess <laughs> oh boy listen there are plenty of lady <laughs> Lloyds out there anyway they mentioned that uh, they always get the stuff on tape and then transfer it to disc save some bucks well this one had some kind of special gimmick on it that wouldn't allow it oh my god I love that what are you doing that's here? the kind of insight you get from the dynamic color news mm -hmm. uh, from 1989. Uh, but uh, they were they were quite fond of it. I, another obscure one he, uh, that Curtis dug up and sent to me was the Color Micro Journal, Volume One, Issue, sep uh, uh, September '83, uh, where they also get into this thing and they conclude with this is a fun game and will challenge you to try and beat it. I'm not sure what the highest score that's ever been made on it, but I'm sure whoever made it 
will be will still be trying to better it. It's that kind of game. So yeah, I'd say that's an accurate appraisal of it. Yeah, yeah. It's the kind of game that makes you want to try to do a little bit better. Uh, so I, yeah, you know, again, it's not my kind of game, but I, I think it's a pretty decent little little piece of kit. We did get some reviews over on our Discord. Oh, good. Um, Let's see. Actually, we didn't. I take it all back. I thought that we got a, a doodle bug review from from uh, from Graham, but Graham was the uh, the Coco Game Selection Committee member that chose this game. So I, I think Graham's a fan of ladybugs. I recall too. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah, hats off to Graham. Mm -hmm. I, I love this game. Thank you so much for picking it. Yes. Um, so, did you find any? Uh, in, there's no resale market on this thing mm -hmm. on eBay. No on the eBay. No, I never find hardly ever find like. The more obscure Coco stuff on there. I didn't see anything about it. Yeah. Uh, I do want to, before we wrap up the show, I do want to apologize for sort of the crazy scheduling that we had. We we recorded, January was going to be a busy month because I was in Ireland for Amiga Ireland, and we recorded our Coco show for the month way early and actually released it in the first week of January, and it seems like it's been forever since our last episode, and then we released uh, a long lost episode last week that sort of tied some folks over. But now that we are back, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to cover one game per episode now, but we'll release twice as often. So we will have a uh, Coco show released bi-monthly at the very latest, or at the very least. And uh, and so uh, if you were wondering what was going on with the Coco show, what the current status was, uh, we are still here. We're still you know, fired up about the Coco, and there's lots more, lots more games to cover for sure. I, uh, I will say that uh, Graham does have a review of Doodlebug. Oh, thank you. So allow thank me, you. if please, I may. Please. Um, this is from Graham Vepke. I'm a big fan of the Ladybug arcade game, and this 8 out of 10 clone of the game is a great 8-bit computer version. A few slight differences to the arcade game. The timer isn't around the border of the screen. The sound isn't quite the same. The collectible letters aren't inside circles, but the rest of the game is there in 8-bit computer art style, and, more, and most importantly, the gameplay is there. The game keeps the tension of the arcade game version. The scrolling and screen refreshing isn't too bad either. And I had a great time with this. So there you go. I had a feeling. I, I could have sworn I saw one. There yeah, I thought I saw one pass by. Thank you so much, Graham, for, for calling us and out that's on just that for in the all, chat. Well, that's, that's, we've been out of date, like Boat said, for, due to my illness and the fact that he was in Ireland. In fact, it's funny. When we, uh, when we put up the, uh, the, 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 the episode from last time, I, uh, it's been so long since we did that. When I, I went back and really enjoyed listening to it, I was like, oh, that was pretty good. I kind of like that. Yeah. I, you know me, I'm a big, I'm a big fan. So oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Well, before we go, we do want to thank our uh, Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you to Buttons, Jeff Landreth, Graham Vebke, Wing Chun Wolf, and Curtis Boyle. Thank you so much for supporting the Coco Show. If you like the Coco Show and you want to support the efforts that we do here, you can uh, support the show at patreon.com slash the Coco Show. And you want to give out that, where do they go to enter that gaming uh, contest? Again? That would be the Coco Talk Discord. Coco Talk yeah, Discord. Yeah, and you I'm go. sure that if you just Google Coco Talk, it'll be one of the links off there off their page there all right so next week aaron we are going to be taking a look at super pitfall okay super pitfall got it yeah all right we'll see you guys next week adios